Greetings my friends and welcome to the final video of the CS2 skin making tutorial. In the previous parts we have recreated my Nova Relic skin, baked its maps, set the correct settings in the workshop item editor and inspected the weapon. In this video we will finally submit the skin to the workshop so that the whole world can see it and hopefully manage to impress the good people at Valve so that they will officially accept the skin. But before we submit we still have some work to do. You can create the best skin the world has ever seen, but it would be worthless without pictures with which you can show it off. You can render images from Blender or whatever 3D tool that you use to show the skin and that would be nice. But the most important pictures to show in the workshop are ones that are taken from the game itself. So let's open the workshop item editor and choose the skin. As we saw last video, we click on the inspect button to see our skin levitating in the air. You can spin the weapon around using the left mouse button and you can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. Also, you can move the weapon left and right by pressing shift and the left mouse button. When you're satisfied with the position of the weapon, press F12 to take a screenshot. Take several screenshots of the best angles of the weapon and try to concentrate on the special features of your skin. In the workshop item editor, we can make changes to the background of the inspection view. Scenery Blurred will give us a look similar to what we used to see in CSGO and Grey and Green will give us Grey and Green backgrounds. The green background can act like a green screen and is a good choice if you want to remove the background, which can be good if you decide to use one of the screenshots as a thumbnail. Besides the inspection view, you should also take screenshots of the skin in-game by pressing Preview. As of now, you can choose to preview the skin in a minimized version of either Dust 2, Ancient or Inferno. When the game loads, I advise you to start by removing all unnecessary stuff from the view. You can do so by opening the console and running the CL drawhot command with a value of 0. Take screenshots of the weapon while it's idle, while visually inspecting the weapon and any other way you want. Also take screenshots of the skin in different wear levels. Besides screenshots, you can also capture videos to show the skin. You can do so by pressing the Windows button with R and Alt at the same time. This can be useful if your skin has some special features that can be viewed better in video such as the glowing effect. When you're done, you can find all the screenshots that you took using the F12 button in the Steam library page of CS2. Scroll down till you find the screenshots section, click on manage and then click on the folder icon. The videos can be found in the capture folder under the videos folder of your computer user. Now we need to edit our images and videos. Let's start with the images. I moved all the screenshots to the same folder of my skin. This way I can access them more easily and my files are more organized. Let's take a look at one of the images. In the workshop, the view is not as big as your screen. So if we keep the image as it is, the details of the skin might not be visible enough. So let's edit the images by pressing on this button here. Now we can move the borders of the image to crop out the unnecessary parts. When you're done, you can either choose save to override the file or save as to create a copy. I do this process to all the screenshots that I take. Now that we're done with the images, it's time to work on the videos. We will turn these videos into GIFs or GIFs or GIFs if you want, not gonna get into this discussion. We want the GIFs to be as short as possible so that they will load faster for the user. So before we turn them into GIF format, we will trim the videos a little bit. You can choose any tool you want for that. But personally, I use the Microsoft Clipchamp tool that comes with Windows. It's free and easy to use. So right click on the video, go to open with and choose Microsoft Clipchamp. Now play the video until the weapon starts moving. Pause it and go back just before the weapon starts moving and move the left boundary to the pointer. Play the video again until the weapon stops moving and again move the right boundary to where the pointer stopped. Click on delete this gap and your video is ready. Give a title to the video and export it. Ok so the videos are ready and all that is left for us to do is to turn them into GIFs. The way I do it is by going to a very useful site called easygif.com. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Choose your video and click on the blue button here. 
When the video loads, set the size and the frame rate of your future GIF. I usually choose the maximum of these two fields because I want my GIFs to be as big and clear as possible. When you're done, click on convert to GIF and wait a few seconds. When the GIF is loaded, you can right click on the image and choose save image as. However, before you do that, the EasyGIF site provides some nice tools that you can use. I won't discuss all of them so feel free to check them out, but the one I use the most is the crop tool. As we did with the images, I will also do with the GIF. I will crop out anything that lacks importance in order to focus on what we want the viewer to see. So move the borders around so that only the important parts of the picture appears and then go down and click crop image. When it's done working, as before you can right click and choose save image as. So now we're done editing our images and videos and what's left for us to do is to create a thumbnail. A good thumbnail is very important to get the attention of viewers. Among hundreds of skins submitted each day, you want your submission to stand out. If you manage to create a good thumbnail out of the screenshots you took in game, then good for you. But usually you can render much better images in the 3D tool with which you created the skin. So let's go back to Blender to render a good image for the thumbnail. This is how we left the skin in Blender. First thing we should do is set the metallic value back to the maximum so that the metallic parts look metallic. Second thing is to set the preview mode to be render preview in order to be able to see how the image will be rendered. We can see that the current lighting is not enough, which doesn't make the skin look good enough. There are two methods of lighting up the scene, either use light sources or HDRI. I'll show both methods and I'll start with the light sources. Press Shift A to get the menu, then go down to lights and create more light sources. If you want to go that way, then I suggest using the area option because it sheds light across a wide area that you specify instead of providing a single spot like the default light bulb or light point. You can create a light area, rotate it 90 degrees to face the weapon by pressing R and then Y to limit the rotation to the Y axis and press 90 to set the degree to 90. Move the light away a little bit and raise it to face the weapon. Go to the light bulb icon, choose rectangle in the shape field, set a suitable X and Y values for the area and raise the power of the light. You can then duplicate the light area a few more times to cover the entire weapon. So this is one way to light up the scene. However, another better way to do that is to use HDRI. You can read more about what HDRI light means in Google, but for now what it can do for us is that it can light up the entire scene for us. You can download HDR lights for free from polyhaven.com. Link as always is in the description. Choose one that you like. Download it and go back to Blender. In order to add an HDRI source to the scene, in the shading tab we change the mode from object to world. Delete the background node, click shift A and choose environment texture. Click on open and choose the HDRI file then connect the node to the output. Now we can see that the entire weapon is lit up. We can remove the background by going to the Render Properties tab and scrolling down to the Film section and there we check the Transparent checkbox. I'll go back to the Material Preview mode because it puts less pressure on the GPU. Final thing we need to do before rendering is to prepare the camera. Click on the camera icon to see what the camera is pointing at. Currently the camera will capture only what we see in this rectangle. So let's zoom in until the entire screen is covered. Also, if we try to move, we'll immediately get out of the camera mode. So, in order to fix that, press N to open the view panel and check the lock camera to view box. And finally, we're ready to take our picture. Try different positions that might work well as a thumbnail. A good thumbnail doesn't need to show the entire weapon. It should act as a teaser for viewers and make them want to see more of the skin. Try focusing on the important features such as the engravings or the different textures of the skin. For the Nova Relic, I used this angle for my thumbnail. 
If the image looks too dark as we have here, then you can always add another light source to assist with the lighting. When you're ready, press F12 so that Blender will render the image for you and wait till it fully loads. We can close Blender now and open the rendered image in GIMP to edit it a little bit. Let's add a background. The background color needs to contrast the colors of the skin so that the skin won't blend in with the background. For this skin I'll simply use a very dark gray. From here you can do whatever you think will make the thumbnail look tempting. You can add a frame or you can add text. You can also play with the color curves which will brighten and darken areas in the skin. I suggest that you take a look at accepted skins and see how professionals create their thumbnails and learn from them. When you're done, export the thumbnail as a JPEG or PNG file. Ok, so far we've taken care of the in-game screenshots and videos and created our thumbnail. Final thing we need to do is write a description for our skin, which will appear under the images of the skin in the workshop. Let's open some text editing tool and write something nice. Now remember how we captured videos and turned them into GIFs? We can add those to the description. And the way to do that is by using some markup language that the browser can translate to images. But before we do that, we need to upload the GIFs somewhere. I use Imgur to store the GIFs, but you can use any other site that provides similar services. Create an account in Imgur or wherever you want, upload the GIFs, and then get the link of the image by copying the third option of this dialog. Go back to the description and paste the link with the IMG tags. And now finally we can submit. Not much is left for us to do, we're almost done guys so hang in there. Open the workshop item editor, choose the skin you want to publish and click on publish. When the page loads click on the plus icon, provide a better name for the skin, then paste the description you prepared to the description section. Click on browse and choose the thumbnail. Make sure that the UV maps you loaded into the skin are all present and that the weapon tag is set to your weapon. Then set the visibility to public and hit the submit button. When the submission is done, your default browser will be open to the page of your item. This is the page of your item. We can see that currently the only available image is the thumbnail. Scroll down a little bit and on the right side you'll find a link that says add slash edit images and videos. From here it's pretty much straightforward, just add your screenshots in the order you find appropriate. When you're done, click on save and continue. And final thing to do is to go all the way down to the revenue section. If the skin is a result of a collaboration between you and your dear friends, then add those nice people to the list and set the agreed upon revenue percentages. When the skin gets officially accepted to the game, the revenue will be distributed among the collaborators according to the percentages you add here. If you're the only one who worked on the skin, you can simply go on and hit the finalize button. And finally we are done. Phew! Damn, creating a skin is not easy. But don't worry my friends, the more you create skins, the easier the whole process will become. Keep making skins and enjoy the journey and the progress that you will gain with each skin. Your work might not be accepted in the upcoming skin case, or the next, or the one after, but keep working and have fun doing it. Try to be more creative and raise your standards to achieve the best quality. Never lose hope and always try to learn from your mistakes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series and that you learned from it. If you need me, remember that you can always leave a comment under the appropriate video or send me a message to my Twitter or Facebook pages. Also, if you still haven't subscribed to my channel, then make sure to do so because I will keep creating videos with more tips and tricks for creating CS2 skins, stickers and sprays. Best of luck with your upcoming skin making journey, take care my friends and see you very soon.